Everyone's life journey is unique and sometimes that includes leaving one religion and becoming a devout follower of another one. In this episode, we're looking at 10 Muslim scholars who joined Islam after Christianity. But with that said, let's jump into this episode. Starting at number 10, we have Bilal Phillips. Dr. Abu Amina Bilal Phillips is a Jamaican Canadian Islamic scholar who converted to Islam in the early 70s. Shortly after becoming a Muslim, he then began a journey to seek Islamic knowledge. That journey then took him to Saudi Arabia where he completed a bachelor's in arts in Islamic studies in Medina and also an MA in Islamic theology in Riyadh. Then he went to the University of Wales, UK where he completed a PhD in Islamic theology in the early 1990s. When you look at the consequences besides the fabrication of hadith, Number nine brings us Yusuf Estes. Sheikh Yusuf Estes is an American Muslim preacher as well as a teacher, and he had converted from Christianity to Islam in the year 1991. And this was after meeting a Muslim man when he was in Egypt. He was a Muslim chaplain for the United States Bureau of Prisons from 1994 up until the year 2000. And also he was a Muslim delegate to the United Nations World Peace Conference for Religious Leaders that was held at the UN in September 2000. Now what he does is he works to share the religion of Islam as well as he hopes to share the correct message with the youth, new Muslims as well as others in very simple English terms. He also tries to make the religion of Islam as well as the Quran as understandable as possible. All of us are susceptible to people telling us stuff from the time we're born. We don't know. I'm a little kid, I'm born and I come into the world and people start telling me stuff. Who's the person I'm gonna trust the very most? Khalid Yassin is next. Oh. Sheikh Khalid Yassin is what is known as a da'i. And this is basically somebody who speaks publicly about the Islamic faith in order to really inspire the spiritual and moral conscience of the listeners. Or also to just educate and inform people about the Islamic faith. He was born in Brooklyn, New York, and he learned to speak about inequality. Now, he grew up in foster homes from the age of three, along with some of his siblings up until the age of 15 years old. He describes each of these foster homes as having a different Christian denomination. So he actually covered a lot of different denominations of Christianity growing up. Prior to his conversion to Islam, he was a gang member as well, and he converted to Islam in the year 1965. God sent a prophet from among the Bani Israel. All the prophets came from a designated group of people. The scholar at number seven is Yusha Evans. Now this man, Yusha Evans, was born and raised in Greenville, South Carolina in the United States into a very conservative Christian family. Now during his early teens, he was really involved in the church and that church is called Young Life, which is a non-denominational organization centered around the youth. And he actually had intentions of becoming a preacher. But later he converted to the religion of Islam in December of 1998 and Yusha, which comes from the name Joshua, he currently travels all around the world as a lecturer as well as a caller to Islam and he also teaches workshops depending on where he is in different parts of the world. Muslims, who I thought were the worst people on earth, could have the right religion. That was just something my brain was not ready to you know, to comprehend. Hamza Youssef is at number six. Hamza Youssef was born as Mark Hansen in Washington, and he grew up as a Greek Orthodox Christian. Now, in the year 1977, after a near-death experience in a car accident and then reading the Quran for himself, he converted from Christianity to Islam. Sheikh Hamza Yusuf, he spent two decades studying with the scholars over in the Middle East, as well as different parts of Africa. And after returning to the United States, Sheikh Hamza Yusuf, he co-founded what is known as the Zaytona College. And this is America's first accredited Muslim liberal arts college. And it's based in California. At number five, we have the scholar Abdul Rahim Green. Abdul Rahim Green was born in 1962 in Tanzania to to a British father and a Polish mother. And he grew up as a Roman Catholic. Now fast forward to the year 1987, after struggling with his Roman Catholic upbringing, as well as also practicing Buddhism for a short time, believe it or not, Abdul Rahim Green, he began his journey to Islam and he officially converted in the year 1988. 
eight. He soon became a regular at the popular speaker's corner in Hyde Park over in London. And that's where he practiced Dawah, which is a call to Islam. And that was done on a regular basis. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is Khatam al nabiyin He is the seal of the messengers. So that responsibility falls upon us. Scholar number four is oh. Hamza Andreas Sortsis. And he's a Muslim convert of Greek descent, as well as he's the author of the divine reality, God is Islam and the mirage of atheism. He's a well-known public speaker as well as an instructor and he has a master's and a postgraduate certificate in philosophy from the University of London. Hamza has studied Islamic thought and theology under qualified scholars and he's delivered various different workshops as well as different courses and an accredited diploma course on topics related to Islamic thought as well as Islamic philosophy. Almost at the end of this episode, number three brings us Suhaib Webb. Now, Suhaib Webb was born William Webb into a Christian family and his grandfather was also a Christian preacher. But as time went on before he converted to Islam and long before he was considered a Muslim cleric actually, Imam Suhaib Webb lost complete interest in any religion. He became a street gangster, specifically a member of the Bloods gang, and he also became a hip-hop DJ and a producer. But after converting to Islam, he founded SWISS, which stands for the Suhaib Webb Institute of Sacred Sciences. And this, by the way, is an Islamic educational experience that uses multiple teaching methods in a structured curriculum so that people can build their Islamic literacy. Only two more scholars to look at and number two brings us Dr. Lawrence B. Brown. Born as a Christian American up until his conversion to Islam in April of 1994, Dr. Brown was definitely somebody that anyone looking in would say like, well, yeah, he's living the stereotypical American dream. He's a graduate from two Ivy League universities and he also served as a respected ophthalmologist in the United States Air Force for eight years. Now, after a personal miracle where his daughter's life was saved, Dr. Brown changed his focus to religious studies and he ended up in the religion of Islam. And finally, our scholar number one in this episode is Nuha Mim Keller. He's an Islamic scholar, teacher, as well as an author. Nuha Mim Keller studied philosophy and Arabic at the University of Chicago and the University of California, Los Angeles. He converted to Islam from Roman Catholicism in the year 1977. Now, on top of teaching Sufism, which is like the spiritual inner dimension of Islam, he has also written several books and articles on a wide range of subjects. And probably one of the most prominent of his works to this very date is The Reliance of the Traveler. And by the way, that's an annotated English translation of the Umdat al-Salik, which is a Shafi'i legal work by Ahmad ibn Naqib al-Misri. It contains over 6,000 legal rulings as well as it was the first English translation of an Islamic legal work to be certified by the al Azhar. University. Every year there are new people converting to Islam. Over time, the Muslim population has been increasing and now about 24.1% of the world are Muslims. First up on the list, we have the famous Mahar Shala Ali. He was born on February 16, 1974, who is an American actor and a rapper. Ali was born into a Christian family. Ali is known as an actor for his role on House of Cards as Remy Daunton, as well as Colonel Stokes in Marvel's Luke Cage and Colonel Boggs in The Hunger Games. So Mahershala's interest in acting rose after he took on the play Spunk. He went on to joining University of New York's acting program. While studying there, he ended up converting to Islam and changed his surname from Gilmore to Ali. Ali is now known as the 100 most influential people as of 2019. Next up on the list, we have Frank Ribéry. Frank Ribéry was born on April 7, 1983. He was a French professional football player and was known as one of the greatest French players of his time. In 2002, he ended up converting to Islam with the influence of his Algerian descendant wife. After converting to Islam, he took on the name Bilal Yusuf Muhammad. Next up on the list, we have the legendary basketball player of all time, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. In his career, he's achieved many records from NBA All-Stars, NBA MVPs, and NBA Final MVPs. He was honored as one of the 50 greatest players of NBA history. While growing up, Abdul-Jabbar grew up in New York City as a Roman Catholic. At the age of 24, Kareem decided to convert to Islam and change his name to Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Next up on the list, we have oh. Sinead O'Connor, who is one of the greatest Irish songwriters and singer. O'Connor 
rose to fame in the late 1980s with her debut album, The Lion and the Cobra, and eventually achieved worldwide success in the 1990s. In her career, she's had 10 solo albums, many singles, many collaborations, and has also made songs for films. While growing up, Sinead grew up as a Roman Catholic, and she's had very strong opinions and views about religion, war, child abuse, and women's rights. In 2018, she decided to accept Islam and decided to change her name to Shahada Sadaka. Up next is Malcolm X, who's one of the most prominent Muslim figures of modern history. Malcolm X was a Muslim minister and a human rights activist. Malcolm X spent his teenage years in foster homes after his dad passed away. In 1946, Malcolm X was sentenced 10 years in prison for breaking and entering. While in prison, he ended up joining the group called Nation of Islam, and over time, he became the organization's most influential leader. In the 1960s, Malcolm X grew apart from the Nation of Islam and ended up joining as a Sunni Muslim. After embracing as a Sunni Muslim, he is now known as Al-Hajj Malik Al-Shabazz. After converting to a Sunni Muslim, there started to become a lot of conflict between him and the Nation of Islam. So unfortunately, as the conflict grew between the two, in 1961, he was assassinated. Jeanette Jackson is the youngest member of the Jackson family and has been a huge cultural icon. In her amazing career, she has sold over 160 million records and has won five Grammys for her amazing hits. Jeanette Jackson and the Jackson family growing up were Jehovah's Witness. After Jeanette married the Muslim billionaire Wasim Almana, she converted to Islam in 2000. 2015. Next up, we have the other Jackson sibling, Jermaine Jackson. Just like his siblings, he's also a singer and a songwriter, and he's had many hits in his career. So in this pretty cool story, Jermaine Jackson ended up meeting his wife in 2004 in a Starbucks line. Like, like can you guys imagine? And the two got married by the end of the year in a mosque in Los Angeles. Just like the rest of the family, he was raised to follow Genova's witness and later in 1989, he ended up converting to Islam after his trip in Bahrain. So in his trip to Bahrain, he was very impressed by the children and the way they were devoted to their religion, Islam. Next up on the list is Danny Blum, who is a German professional football player. Danny began his professional soccer career with the German association football club called SV Sandhausen. After joining the club, he won a title in 2012. In 2014, he ended up joining or transferring to another German association football club, FC Nunberg. Shortly after joining this new club, he ended up injuring his knee where he had to take six months off. During these six months, he was talking to his friends and religion was brought up and they started talking about Islam. Later on, he took the decision to convert to Islam and he described Islam as a religion of hope and strength. Danny Blum has since been a devoted follower of Islam. He's been praying five times a day. Next up on the list is Cat Stevens, who is known as one of the most influential singers and songwriters of all times. Cat achieved great success in the 1960s as a teen idol. In 1975, Cat experienced a life-changing event where he was swimming in the Pacific Ocean and was pulled in into the sea. While in trouble, he started praying to God and he prayed that if he was saved, he would devote his life to God. Two years later, his brother gave him a copy of the Quran and he started to embrace the Quran. After embracing the Quran, he changed his name to Yusuf Islam and he ended up shocking the world by leaving his career and his fame behind to raise a family. Next up, we have one of the greatest and one of my favorite people to ever exist of all time, Muhammad Ali, who is a professional boxer and a philanthropist. Before he changed his name to Muhammad Ali, he was known as Cassius Marcellus Clay Jr. In 1960, he became an Olympic gold medalist, and in 1964, he became the world heavyweight champion and ended up defending his title 19 times. In 1961, he ended up converting to Islam and changed his name to Muhammad Ali. In 1966, during the time of the Vietnam War, Ali refused to be drafted into the military. He was then arrested and found guilty of draft evasion and he was stripped of his boxing titles, but shortly after he was eventually released. He is widely regarded as one of the most significant sport figures as well as a Muslim figure of the 20th century. It's often surprising when we find out that our favorite influencers did not always hold the same beliefs as we know them to have nowadays. We're going to be looking at 10 famous influencers who accepted 
Islam. The influencer at number 10 is Sheikha Official. She's a former musician and she grew up agnostic and atheist and she was someone who got married at the age of 18 years old and she stayed married to her first husband till the age of 25. Now she didn't know any Muslims growing up and she started having great success in her music career and she performed on stage with some pretty big names. But there was one particular incident that happened at a music event and this unfortunate incident led her to the point of wanting to end her own life. Now it was her mother who intervened with prayer for her and told her to also pray and it was that exact moment where her pain from her past completely left her she says. Now she makes videos on various social media platforms with her husband named Mohammed for entertainment and educational purposes and also gives her viewers insight into their lives as a married couple. Kishama Meridian comes next. She's an Australian YouTuber and Instagrammer who posts a lot of makeup, fashion, and lifestyle content. She describes herself as being a very open person, and she's in the past explored other religions like Christianity and Judaism, but for some reason, they didn't really click for her, so she kind of stopped looking into those religions. But for some reason though, it was Islam that really spoke to her heart. Her partner, who is a Muslim, helped guide her in her fascination with Islam. And it was about six months into her in-depth study and research and watching lectures about Islam. That's when she took her Shahada, which is a profession of faith, because she believed that Islam answered all of her questions like what would happen when you die. And for her, the answers that Islam provided was satisfactory for her. Next up at number eight, we have Rosie Gabrielle. She's a Canadian solo traveler and she spent many of her years exploring Pakistan and that's where she really ended up converting to Islam. Rosie says that she quit her job and she decided to live a life following what she's passionate about and part of that passion was traveling. She gives big thanks to the people of Pakistan for helping her with the pain and the distress that she had been facing for years years to the point where she was just crying. She even made a video where she broke down in tears on camera. But now she says that she is completely free and at peace. Next up, let's look at Jay Palfrey. Jay Palfrey, who is he? Well, he's a British vlogger whose channel is growing pretty fast, actually. At the time of recording this video, he is just over 900,000 subscribers, well on his way to a million subscribers. And his videos, as you can imagine, have reached millions of people across the world. He started his YouTube channel back in January of 2017, and he started uploading videos in April of 2019. So it took him a little while to really get on the YouTube bandwagon, but he started uploading travel vlogs and reaction videos too, and he traveled to Istanbul, Turkey, India, Romania, and various other countries. And when he converted, he uploaded a video where he took his Shahada, the profession of faith in Islam, in Turkey on August 16th, 2020. Number six brings us to Aisha Rosalie. Now she is a British YouTuber as well and she became very popular after she converted to Islam. She got a job when she was completing her higher studies in London, England and then after that she decided to move to LA in the United States and that's when she really began to train herself to become a professional actor. But that was Pretty short-lived and one day she decided that, you know, she just wants to go visit some other countries, get away from America for a bit. And Turkey was the first country on her list. So when she went to Istanbul, Turkey, that's where her interest in Islam really began. Now, Mufti Menk was the first scholar that she started to listen to as a non-Muslim and she credits his talks and lectures to be the thing that actually made a big difference for her when it came to converting to Islam. Number five, in at this spot is Aslima. Eileen Lahi, who goes by the username Aslima, she is an Instagram star and a YouTuber from the country of Estonia. I don't know too many people from Estonia, as a matter of fact, I don't think I can recall one off the top of my head right now. Either way, she usually posts selfies and travel photos and pictures of her family while donning modest clothes 
clothing. And now you'll also find travel vlogs on her YouTube channel and videos where she shares her faith. Her journey to Islam started at the age of 14 years old, but she was not raised in any particular religion though. Young's World comes in at number four. Now he was a strict Christian growing up in a very strict Christian household. Like his entire family was heavily involved in the church. He's from South Korea and he launched his YouTube channel in 2019 and you'll find some pretty funny reaction videos and skits. But you see, due to some crimes that were actually committed in several churches when he used to attend and also the fact that he noticed so many Christians were not practicing their faith at all, well, that really turned him off from religion in general, and he got to the point where he just didn't want to follow any religion. But after he began YouTube and began to seek God on his own, he was actually urged by his fans to explore and embrace Islam. And when he became Muslim, he didn't even want to tell his friends and family, but now he's a lot more public with his faith. Mr. Watwa comes in at number three. Three, Abdullahi Uni, also known as Mr. Watwa on social media. He has a fast growing YouTube channel and he actually converted to Islam after two years of doing research and studying. Originally, he was from the country of Nigeria and he comes from a Catholic background and the majority of his videos you'll find are vlogs and reaction videos. As a matter of fact, he's even reacted to some of our videos on FTD Facts in the past. Like take for instance our Facts About Hinduism video where he did a reaction to. This group of texts are known as Vedas. Vedas are also called Surti. Unlike other religious texts, the more and more he viewed content on religion, especially on Islam, well, his beliefs and views started to shift as he questioned his Catholic beliefs. Fans were really happy when he announced on YouTube that he took his Shahada and officially became a Muslim. And now this guy has such a great personality. He's always in a good mood. And honestly, I would have to say that watching his videos leaves me in a good mood and I'm sure it'll do the same for you as well. The influencer at number two is Dawood Kim. Dawood Kim, he's a famous Korean YouTuber and his name is J. David Kim, also known as Dawood Kim. He declared that he converted to Islam and he actually grew up Christian, but after spending quite a bit of time looking into and examining Islam for himself, he decided that it was the religion that he wanted to choose to practice. Now, after becoming Muslim, he changed his name to Dawood Kim, and Dawood is the Arabic pronunciation of the name David. When it comes to converting to Islam, he says this in his own words, and I quote, I'm so happy. Actually, I'm so happy. There are some hardships and difficulties in Korea as a Muslim, but instead of that, I am so happy because so many Muslims in Korea said congratulations. And finally, we end off this episode with number one. This one was the most surprising for me, Ali Dawa. Ali Dawa, he is a very popular Muslim YouTuber. He's a content creator from Turkey whose videos help spread the message of Islam as well as inspire young people. Ali Dawa comes from a Shia and agnostic household and they never really practice their religious beliefs or anything and surprisingly in his teenage years he was involved with gangs and it wasn't until he moved in with his dad and started hanging out with a new group of friends that his life started to turn around. Ali is a student of comparative religion and because of that, he has a whole catalog of videos that aim to raise awareness on topics related to religion and how you can compare them and come to your own conclusions. He's a staunch promoter of Islam and his videos really, really, really embody the passion that he has for people wanting to know about the religion of Islam. <laughs>